Well, once again, the corrupt corporate media has failed to dictate how reality is going to be viewed. Their fake news narrative is completely crumbling right before their eyes. It's totally on the collapse. Now, yesterday, we reported about how Quantcast had apparently delisted Infowars.com. Uh, this was right about the same time that the mainstream media, and all these headlines everywhere about fake news, and they were really pushing this agenda. So they were circulating this list of fake news websites, and it included big conservative news outlets such as Infowars and Breitbart. Well, now Infowars has been reinstated onto Quantcast list of top web websites, and it's even skyrocketed even higher, even more domination by Infowars. So you can see how this extreme bias, leftist, uh, social justice warrior crushing anyone's ideas if they hurt their feelings, this is totally backfiring. And it's just further serving to make the mainstream media and these people who are totally fascist in their in their views uh it's starting to make people realize even more that the mainstream media is a total joke and so that's why they are now hovering at record lows and infowars continues to crush them so when you see this fake news happening everywhere on all platforms obviously that that means that they they're pushing an agenda it's very frightening they're getting the word from on high president obama is trying to tell us that they're doing us a favor by culling our news and by curating the information that we're allowed to have access to, taking it back to the days when you just had three uh, propaganda outlets to choose from. And, you know, this is the same media that, of course, pushed the whole weapons of mass destruction where millions of people died. Uh, they also really pushed the fact that there uh, a viral video, a viral YouTube video was what was responsible for what happened in Benghazi. And so had they not been checked on that, this is the kind of fake news that would have just been allowed to uh, saturate the airwaves and just go on forever as truth. And so this is what they're truly afraid of, is that they got totally crushed in the election this year, regardless of all of the crooked things that they try to do to get Hillary Clinton in. And they still lost. And that is why they are so afraid. And they're going to such totalitarian means to crush dissent and to, to crush alternative viewpoints, alternative media that's out there. Now, Harry Reid, of course, they've really been pushing how it was this fake news that cost Hillary Clinton the election. But but Harry Reid is calling it a James Comey. He's responsible for the Clinton loss and calling him a straight up Republican operative. So, you know, it's not that Hillary Clinton was totally crooked and unlikable. It's everybody else's fault that Hillary Clinton won. Um, Senator Reid went so far as to say uh, that he purposely threw the election in favor of Trump. And he said, no question in my mind, Clinton would have won this election without any problem if Comey had not been the Republican operative that he is. He came out against what the attorney general recommended, against what common sense dictates. And so obviously this is in stark contrast to remarks that he made just in July when Comey initially said that he wasn't going to be uh, recommending charges for Clinton. At that time, he said, no one can question the integrity and the competence of James Comey. So now all of a sudden he's a crooked Republican operative. You know, these are just total whiny babies. They don't get their way. And uh, you, the, the fact is, if Hillary Clinton hadn't set up her private email server in the first place, none of this would have happened. She only has herself to blame for why the American people do not believe her. And even in uh, her, her own kind of inner uh, campaign there with her campaign donors and, and fundraisers, she sent out an email saying, you know, that they did believe their analysis is that Jim Comey's letter raising doubts that were groundless and baseless stopped their momentum. So if they were groundless and baseless claims that were able to stop your momentum, then obviously you just have a little bit of too much baggage because, you know, the truth is really what resonates with people. So there was something about this that really made people go, man, she really is crooked. She really is going to get in there and we're going to have to be dealing with this. E email scandal if she becomes the president. So now we know that Donald Trump has chosen Senator J Jeff Sessions to serve as Attorney General of the United States. Uh, this is, um, you know, one of Trump's closest advisors. He was one of the earliest backers of Donald Trump, so this earned him his pick of positions. Initially, he was being considered for Secretary of Defense, uh, but now he'll be the Attorney General. He's known for his hardline views on immigration and trade and a bipartisan proposal to cut mandatory minimum prison sentences, but 
the left says he is a terrible pick because he is racist, of course. So it's not only the new attorney general, but also the uh, next soon to be national security advisor, Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, but also his son. I mean, every they're just everyone's a racist. Everybody's racist, sexist, homophobic. So this is what we're going to have to be dealing with for the next few months is they're trying to tear down the character of everyone by just calling them a racist. And this is the left's new thing to unite their party, I guess, to bring people over to their side is this whole um, victim class, this racism. Uh, so this is going to be a lot of fun for those of us kind of watching back here in the nosebleed seats. So something that they're not really reporting on, of course, are all of these substantiated attacks on Trump's supporters. But yet they're going out and saying um, how there's been all of these hate crimes and acts of hate from Trump supporters. But then they're not actually talking about for instance, a Chicago man named David Wilcox, brutally beaten by three men as onlookers screamed, you voted Trump. Damn, he voted Trump. And then they're, they like put his arm through the back of a window and trapped his arm in a car and drove through traffic, dragging him down the street. And then when this incident was brought up on CNN, Simone Sanders says in a mocking tone, oh, my goodness, poor white people. Ugh. You know, complaining that he's getting dragged down a street and beaten. Shouldn't have voted for Trump. I guess you deserve that. There was a high school student from Rockville, Maryland, punched and kicked to the ground by his classmates for wearing his Make America Great Again hat. A 74-year-old man assaulted and thrown to the ground by a 23-year-old female Black Lives Matter activist. Um, this was outside of a Trump Tower uh, during a protest. This, <laughs> this girl is an anti-bullying activist who is shoving this uh, 74-year-old man to the ground. There's a Virginia elementary school student badly beaten by his classmates. He voted for Trump in a mock election, so he had to go to the ER. Uh, two men rained a series of punches and kicks down on a Connecticut man. He was just standing on a traffic island with his American flag and his Trump sign. I mean, and it goes on and on. So here we have high school students getting beaten by their classmates for supporting. They're not even old enough to vote. They're not even old enough to vote, but yet these totalitarian fascist social justice warrior jerk offs are beating people up in the name of intolerance. They're they're saying that they're bigoted and hateful and intolerant. So I have to kick your butt. It makes no sense. And then, of course, we have Starbucks now uh, on, under fire because their protocol, they agree to put whatever name on your cup that you request. That's kind of their thing. And, you know, as long as it's not obscene. Well, a man walked into a Starbucks and requested that the name be Trump, that they put Trump on the cup. And there's a video where this social justice warrior Starbucks employee is refusing to write the name Trump. And not only does he refuse to write the name Trump, he calls the cops on the guy. He calls the police on the man for requesting that he want the name. Trump. This is ridiculous. See, this is the totally tolerant, loving left. They're not even going to serve you at Starbucks. Uh, no word yet on whether that barista has been fired. Uh, we are, we're also going to be talking with a TV reporter coming up in one of the next segments. Margaret Howell is going to be interviewing uh, Scarlett Fakar. She's a reporter at a Fox affiliate in Houston. She was just fired from her job for celebrating a Trump victory on her private Facebook page. <sighs> So and then here on the other side, we've got anti-Trump protesters threatening to put a bullet in the brain of a Michigan elector. This is someone who's a party electoral college. He's being bombarded with death threats from anti-Trump protesters. If they're saying that they're going to put a bullet in his brain if he does not change his vote in favor of Hillary Clinton. And they're confirming that a lot of people, uh, electors in Ohio, are receiving similar violent threats and as they're sending him these emails talking about shoving a gun in his mouth, blowing his brains out, they're doing it saying, you're a hateful bigot. I am going to blow your brains out. This is the insanity of what is happening. And then, of course, we do have a man who was arrested for making actual death threats against Donald Trump. This is Zachary Benson, 24. He now faces five years in prison. Um, after he stated that he, his intent was to assassinate Trump, he said that was his life goal. I don't care if I serve infinite sentences. That man deserves to cease existing. 
So I guess you're going to get your wish there, Mr. Benson. But again, more tolerance. This is insane. So at a, at a student's union, union at a London university, in the name of stopping fascism, okay, Operation Stop Fascism, they're banning newspapers from the college campus that they deem to be intolerant. So they're going to kill you. They're going to shut down your First Amendment. And it's all in the name of tolerance. While President-elect Donald Trump continues to fill his cabinet with anti-Obama administration candidates from the fortress of Trump Towers in New York City, all the way from the top of the New World Order pyramid down to the bottom, the minions are panicking. It's a feeling of excitement for the future, which is so much in the air here, is not shared everywhere in the world, unfortunately. It is in contrast with a deep sense of turbulence and uncertainty, which we see now globally. So the last time we met, I was very positive uh, that Hillary Clinton would be the next president of the United States and walk into the Oval Office as one of the best qualified presidents in our country's history. We, of course, we were all very disappointed, not more than disappointed, hard to accept the results, but accept we do. Meeting with his New World Order puppet counterpart, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, President Obama gave the brainwashed and violent anti-Trump protesters the support they were whining for. I would not advise people who feel strongly uh, or are concerned about uh, some of the issues that have been raised during the course of the campaign, I wouldn't advise them uh, to be silent. Obama also mentioned the pointless attempt he and the dying corporate media are making to stifle the truth. If we are not serious about facts and what's true and what's not, and particularly in an age of social media where so many people are getting uh, their information in sound bites and snippets off their phones. If, if we can't discriminate between serious arguments and propaganda, then we have problems. Corporatic politicians are scurrying, fearing they're just due as the tables are turning on the federal institutions that once protected them. Jesse Jackson rallied from the University of Michigan, the alma mater of Gerald Ford, to call for a blanket pardon of Hillary Clinton's laundry list of crimes. There are those in the anger and spirit of retribution who want to use Hillary Clinton as a trophy in the name of false justice. It would be wise in the name of just as the lineage of Lincoln and Ford, the President Obama, to do the same and to pardon Hillary Clinton. Even progressive Austin City Council member Greg Kazar is waving the flag of anti-immigration and anti-Trump rhetoric, announcing that he will lead a protest in Austin, Texas on Inauguration Day with the local Communist Party in tow, denouncing Donald Trump's adherence to long-established immigration and naturalization laws, a surefire way to destroy any kind of political career Kazar had in mind. I am here to pledge to you that I will put my full being alongside you and alongside every leader of conscience in this community to fight Donald Trump at every turn. When Donald Trump says he wants to ban our Muslim brothers and sisters, that he wants people to register based on their faith, when he wants to attack the fundamental rights that created this country, we're going to say, hey, no! We're going to say, hey, no! And progressive Travis County Sheriff-elect Sally Hernandez is standing by her statement that she will not cooperate with ICE officers in the deportation of illegal immigrants. I ran on the platform to implement a progressive immigration policy and I will keep my promise to the Travis County voters. Illegal immigrants like Nicodema Correa Gonzalez, who after being deported five times, crossed again only to sexually assault 10 women in Austin, Texas, setting one of those women on fire. I think on face value, he led probably a normal life where he goes to work um, during the day and comes home in the afternoon and 
um, you know, late nights goes looking for women. A reckoning is coming, and it's coming very soon. No matter how desperately the criminals that have lost their keys to the kingdom resist, the swamp will be drained. Every country has been waiting for the result of the American election, and the result being so totally unexpected, they'll all have to go back to the drawing board, including uh, uh, we. John Bound for Infowars.com. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, November 18th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the mainstream news media's fake news narrative is already beginning to collapse as Quadcast decides to reinstate InfoWars.com on their list of top websites. Then... Shocking video of Starbucks employees who refuse to write the name Trump on a cup for a paying customer. That's the name I want to be heard, heard and seen as today. And your name was what again? Ryan. Ryan. And you're refusing to do that, is that correct? And they get so triggered that they actually call the police. And look what happened to a Fox TV reporter who celebrated Trump's victory on her private Facebook page. You're fired. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, we've seen people that support Trump openly bashed in the face. We've seen their car stolen. Uh, we've seen unprecedented physical violence firings. The lady who joins me now, Scarlett Ficar, she actually was fired from her job. She's a, a news anchor here in Texas, and she said that her employer fired her once she supported Trump openly on social media. Scarlett, thank you so much for joining the show. Could you just let our audience know what happened to you and uh, what you're doing about it? Yeah, um, well, thanks for having me, guys. So about a week ago, the day after the election, I posted something personal to my private face, uh, Facebook page regarding um, the election, saying that I was happy that Donald Trump has, had won. Um, and this was, again, to my private page. Not 24 hours later, uh, I saw that same post splattered across um, a couple different news sites, the Houston Chronicle being one of them. Um, and I had discovered that one of my quote-unquote friends, um, most likely somebody who disagreed with me, had screenshotted part of that post and sent it to them, um, which is what has made this a huge, um, a huge deal right now. So in the past week, my employer told me um, that until further notice, I'm not allowed to be on air. Um, and so I was writing uh, new scripts for other uh, reporters slash anchors to voice over and then air. And yesterday they came up to me, a human resources called me down to the office and they said, we are terminating your contract um, because you broke your social media clause in the public, uh, in the uh, employee handbook. So this wasn't anything that was in my contract. It was in our employee handbook, nothing specifically based on you know, politics or anything like that. But anything in our handbook says that if you, you know, put our station in a bad light, you know, they can terminate you. So this is kind of, I guess, just shocked a lot of different people um, because I think that more than just me have voiced their opinions as a journalist on, you know, they, whether it's in conversation or on their personal Facebook page, they've done the same thing and they have not been persecuted for it. There have been articles released today by the same ones who posted something on me prior, uh, were the first ones to post FTV Live, for example, posted something this morning regarding another journalist that has done the same thing, um, but has not been persecuted for it. So it's just kind of a, um, a double-edged sword here, kind of a lose-lose situation for me. Don't really know why this all happened. Do you feel like you were bullied or targeted because of the Trump support. Do you think you would have had the same treatment if you had been a Hillary Clinton supporter? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I would say, I mean, I've worked at three different local news stations in my career, and I can say that the majority of those that I work with, my coworkers, are liberal. Um, and I've seen, you know, I'm not going to ever oust any of my, you know, friends or coworkers, but I've seen others do the same thing on the other end, you know, even on air. And they've not been, you know, fired for it. 
you know, and this is a huge, I mean, I, I was fired. <laughs> I wasn't, there's been nothing in, on my record. I mean, you can, you can look in, at every single thing I've done over the past four years as a journalist, scour over my reports, if you will, and you'll not find anything unbiased in those reports um, or bias in those reports. So right now I'm kind of just at a point where I'm like, why did this happen to me and not to a lot of other people that have been voicing their opinions on the opposite side of the spectrum? Do you regret doing it or is it something that you're you're kind of proud of at this point? Is it a badge of honor, you know, or is it something like, oh, my gosh, I mean, is there any regret on your part? Well, I've gotten a lot of hate comments. I mean, people com commenting, calling me really horrid things, horrid names that language I don't use. Um, so in that matter, you know, it, it's brought me down a little bit. But at the same token, I express my views as a individual. I didn't express them as a journalist and I never have. So, you know, I don't feel bad for my post, you know, so at this point in time, I'm just going to say, no, I don't feel bad for what I said because it, there was nothing that was not factual about it. Right. What do you think are the next steps for you? I mean, if this had happened to me, obviously, you know, there, there's a legal issue with that because all you're doing is supporting a president, you know, someone who actually won the presidency. And we've seen this ridiculous narrative. We've seen this here at InfoWars, and we cover it usually every day. The mainstream media narrative where anybody who supports Trump, they're racist, they're homophobic, they're xenophobic, they're bigots, uh, they're all of these things. And you would say that doesn't describe you at all. If you could just talk about, you know, who you are as a person and uh, not wanting to be labeled as that, because that essentially is the, is the tagline uh, that makes mainstream mainstream media has tried to pin on anybody supporting Trump openly and they also encourage uh, people uh, to viciously attack and to go after uh, Trump supporters has that been kind of what you're experiencing do you feel like you were painted in that box absolutely I definitely feel like there have been people who've commented saying that I'm racist for my comment you know again there have been reports that have said that I've chastised African Americans and once I reposted that to my own Facebook page saying that, look, this is what I said. This is what the media is saying. They retracted their statements and rewrote it in these same articles. So they know that there you have to understand that there is a media bias and they're trying to paint a picture of those of us that you know, didn't support Barack Obama, didn't vote for him as racist mm -hmm. when that's so far from the truth as i said in my post you know i'm a multiracial person myself my father was born and raised in iran i you know i've never in my life experienced anything you know to where i've been accused of being racist because nobody everyone knows me they know who i am so absolutely i feel like i've been you know wrongly put in the media as somebody who has racist feelings towards people, and I don't. So absolutely, I just think it's ridiculous, everything that everyone is accusing those that have supported Trump of being. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you want to say to other people that have been bullied like this? Do you have a message for them at all? Or is it just about kind of self-preservation at this point? And where do you go from here? Well, I guess I could just say, you know, you have to stand up for what you believe in. Right now in the country, they, there are bullies, exactly like you said. We're being bullied into thinking that what we personally feel, how we've lived our lives is wrong. When, you know, in fact, there are facts to support the things that we're saying, not in a mean manner. We're not screaming at anybody. We're just expressing our opinions. And look at me, I've been bullied. I've been pushed down for the things that I've said that is right there up on my Facebook page. And I'm not ashamed to show it because I want everyone to see that what I said wasn't in any way other, anything other than just my opinion on, you know, the election. So I just say, I guess to those people, just stand up for what you believe in. If you don't want to be persecuted like I am, maybe don't say anything at all. But if you're not afraid to stand up for the things that you believe in on your personal basis, then, you know, there's no shame in hiding it. Right. Well, Scarlett, it is absolutely a badge of honor for me to get to talk to you, frankly, today. Um, like many of us that are Trump supporters, I myself am one, you know, publicly, you really, you take a risk. And we've taken a risk the past few months, even speaking out um, on social media for that matter. And it's, it's frankly a badge of honor to be able to 
to be persecuted uh, when you have, you just for expressing your opinions and beliefs. Are you going to, may I ask you, and you don't have to answer this if you're not comfortable, but are you contemplating any sort of legal action at this time? Like, the, I feel like, you know, what's happened to you is possibly actionable, I would think. Yeah, I'd rather not talk about that at this point in time. I mean, um, I love my career. I love my job, and I think I'm very good at it. And, you know, I think there's a place somewhere for me. I don't know where that is yet. But at this point in time, I can at least say that legal action is not at the top of my list. Right. It's, it's probably about healing at this point. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, this article, this inter interview is going to be up in the Nightly News tonight. It's also going to be up on YouTube later. Be sure. Scarlett, do you have a Twitter handle you'd like to throw to? Yeah, uh, Scarlett on TV. All right. Got it. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. For more reports like this, be sure to check out our website, Infowars.com. I'm Margaret Hell reporting for Infowars.com. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. We're continuing our conversation with former member of the original Black Panther Party, my good friend Larry Pinkney joins us now. And I wanted to bring in one of our very own Ashley Beckford, who's a, a, a very good addition to the InfoWars crew. And she has experienced, like we all have, those of us who are Trump supporters, that you know, our family members and a lot of uh, friends, family members have been triggered by our support of Donald Trump. And Ashley, I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about what you've experienced out there in public. I know I've seen you wearing the Donald Trump shirt. Sometimes you have a Donald Trump hat. How have you triggered the anti-Trumpers out there? Exactly. That's exactly right, Darren. I mean, ever since I came on board with InfoWars and even before then, I was triggering a lot of people with uh, Trump regalia and just saying that I was considering voting for Trump and trying to explain to people who have voted Democratic their whole lives that actually you're on a plantation. You're not thinking for yourself. You're not considering what has this gotten me over the course of you know my life. Look at all the Democratic mayors and things and just the whole history of the Democratic Democratic Party when you look at Hillary's America by Dinesh D'Souza. So when I was out there, my biggest thing was during this election season, uh, connecting with my family. I was at a family reunion and I literally had people who stopped talking to me. So I was wondering if Mr. Pinckney, it's a pleasure uh, to speak with you today. I wonder what can I say to these people at this point? Like, what can I say to try to get them on board and try to give Trump a chance or just even have some original thought, you know, as to their political beliefs. Well, first of all, it's great being with you, Ashley. Uh, this is fantastic. I, I think that, especially with family members, uh, it's important to let them know or remind them that this is, after all, supposed to be a democracy where people are not only allowed to make up our own mind, but are supposed to look into uh, their, their own intellectual, if you will, prowess, prowess, okay? And, you know, in my own family, there were those who voted, uh, uh, many, I might say, Democratic Party, or what I call a Democratic Party plantation. There were those who voted third party, and, and there were those who voted Trump, okay? Uh, and it, it, it's, what we're dealing with, Ashley, is what Franz Fanon called cognitive dissonance. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's really, that, that, that's really difficult to deal with, but that's the reality. What I do is I put it out there, let people know where I'm coming from, so, you know, and then allow them to, to digest it. People at this point, unfortunately, are either unable or unwilling to digest the obvious. Look at the mainstream, vomit stream media. They are still unwilling to, uh, to digest the obvious. So, I mean, that's the only, I don't know if I can call it a bit of advice or, or, or my take on it. I'll put it that way. Hey, I want to share a story with you guys. And, and my older brother, He's, he's the, your typical Bush type conservative. And he called me about a month before the election, asked me who I was voting for. And I, I thought, well, obviously he's not watching YouTube or, or Facebook or watching the Alex Jones show. I figured he would know, but he didn't know about that. I, I told him I was voting for Trump. 
And his response was, Trump's a clown, he's an ass clown. And I said, well, are you gonna vote for Hillary? He says, you know what, I'm not gonna vote for anybody this year. I just, I don't like either candidate. I said, well, fair enough. And then I told him what an impact Infowars has been making on this campaign because I told him that every, like when we go to these Trump rallies, every fifth person in line would have a Infowars shirt. Every 10th person would be a group of 10 people wearing Infowars t-shirts, you know? And I said, we are really making an impact. And his response to me was, he says, little brother, no offense, but I really don't see how that's helping him too much. See, and, and a lot of these people, they, they think the independent media is a joke, like we are uh, some internet bloggers in our mother's basement. No, independent media, Infowars has made a tremendous impact. The mainstream media is dead. Social media is taking over. Social media, I believe, was instrumental in winning this race. What do you think? Absolutely. And the fact of the matter is that uh, Trump, again, I say whether people like him or not, that's not the point. Trump was able to, Donald J. Trump was able to at least give the impression that he knows how to talk with the people. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Not down to them, not at them, whether you agree or disagree. You know, uh, and this is, I think, one of the big reasons that uh, he is now president elect. Uh, Hillary Clinton, and I am saying Hillary deliberately, Hillary Clinton, the warmonger, uh, did just the opposite. Do you know that she did not even go to the state of Wisconsin? What arrogance. She did not even go there. And then to be shocked and surprised that Wisconsin went to Trump? Maybe, I mean, maybe she was too tired. You know, yeah, she maybe. Needed, needed a nap. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Hey, I, I was going to tell you too, uh, Ashley, mm -hmm. that, um, you know, sad to say, I'm not going to mention any names, but there is somebody here who works in our office that they can't even have Thanksgiving dinner together wow. this year because of this election. So it, it has definitely affected all of us. We need to stick to our guns. And as Larry Pinkney knows, they want us, they want us divided, not united. What can we do as, as uh, to, you know, to unify everyone? I guess it's through dialogue, and I guess it's through what we're doing right here, right now. That's right. You're absolutely correct. And, you know, the dialogue, for right discourse is what it's all about. Now, if people uh, don't want to engage in forthright di discourse, so be it, okay? But at least we make the attempt, attempt to do that. And I think we're going to, when I say we, everyday, ordinary, black, white, brown, red, and yellow people, uh, they're going to, the establishment, the oligarchy, is, as uh, the power elite, as I call it, uh, is going to continue to do everything it can, utilizing the vomit stream media. We know that. So we need to do everything we can, person to person, people to people. And as we said back in the day, all power to, to the, the people. people. That's right, all power to the people. I, I do have one more question. I'm curious to know, uh, what are some historical resources and things that we can point people to so they can kind of understand the history of the Democratic Party and just kind of get a new sense of, you know, what it really truly means to be an American. It doesn't mean that you're stuck with the Democratic Party. You have to do everything they say. You're stuck with this mentality of kind of a uh, uh, victim mentality, I feel, that is really big in, you know, urban centers. How do we kind of get people to understand the history where, you know, people have been empowered, you know, and they're able to actually c control their own ideas and create their own ideas and, you know, sense of, you know, where they should go in the future? Great question. So, you know, uh, Brother Malcolm, Brother Malcolm X, El Haj Malik El Shabazz said, he referred to the Democratic Party as Dixie crap. Okay. Right. And, and he was absolutely correct. Um, as a historical example, uh, Robert Byrd, uh, the late Senate, U.S. Senator Robert Byrd. Hillary's mentor. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, he was not only a member of the Ku Klux Klan, okay, but a recruiter for and of the Ku Klux Klan. 
Today, our country has lost a true American original, my friend and mentor, Robert C. Byrd. Senator Byrd was a man of surpassing eloquence and nobility. Look, I said, I'm saying this to make a point. And he was a Democrat, well-respected Democratic Party, okay? Nobody is saying, I'm certainly not saying, and I don't think any of us are saying that uh, uh, Donald J. Trump is a saint. I don't think any, any of us uh, have sainthood. Exactly. Sorry. You know, sorry, Obama supporters, who, <laughs> you know, sorry, but, you know, so what we are saying is be critical thinkers. Think it through. Think it through. This is a protest, and this is a riot. If you can't tell the difference, then you are part of the problem. Info. Today on the Alex Jones Show, Alex was talking about how he was feeling euphoric over the victories that we have witnessed here over the course of the last two weeks. Of course, the election of Donald Trump, who he's beginning to nominate, and the fact that we are dominating the rhetoric, controlling the narrative. But we can also see how our numbers are exploding on YouTube. Now, I'm a competitive person. And Donald Trump said that we were going to be sick of winning. We were going to win so much that we'd be sick of it. Well, I personally am not sick of winning. So just on YouTube, now this is obviously one platform, but I just wanted to talk about this because this illustrates how we really are winning, folks. This isn't just rhetoric. Infowars and the quote unquote alt-right or conspiracy theorist or fake news, whatever they want to deem you, the point is we are winning. We have the audience. Let's look at some of the YouTube channels and their numbers compared to InfoWars YouTube channel. Here are some of the YouTube channels for some of the big news corporations out there. Fox News, you can see here, 400,000 subscribers, just over that. So we have 1.8 million. They've got 400,000. They've got a, a video that's been up there for a day, doesn't even get 10,000 views. We can move on here to uh, the next one. Again, we're just looking. This is CNN. They've got 1.6 million, so they're not doing too bad, but we're still beating them. But there's a video that's been up for two years that they just leave there. They've got 2 million views on that video. We've almost got 2 million views on the AIDS Skrillex video. It hadn't even been up for a year. But you know what? CNN, not bad, 1.6, but we're still beating them. Let's move on to the next one here. MSNBC, oh, a whopping 225,000. Look at that. 654 views on their latest video. I put up a video in the morning here, and within an hour, it's got thousands of views. So we are crushing you, MSNBC. NBC News, another example, 321,000. They can't even get 1,000 views on a video they put up two days ago. So they are a non-entity, a total non-factor on YouTube. Sky News. Let's just roll through these a little bit quicker, guys. Sky News, again, under half a million subscribers. They do have 2,000 people watching right now. When InfoWars goes live, we get tens of thousands of people to tune in. BBC News, under a million. These are the biggest news outlets. These are the mainstream news. These are the people that um, are upset <laughs> that call us fake news because we're beating them. And it's their followers who are the ones calling us fake news, making lists because, well, their saviors in the press, well, they're not saving them and they're losing. Even Univision Noticias, this is uh, Univision News, under a million subscribers. Not bad on the total view count there from a day ago. I'll give them a little credit there, 20,000. That almost competes with us. But sorry, we've actually got double the subscribers as you do. Here's Bloomberg. They've got under half a million. They're live right now. They don't even have a thousand people tuned in. So we are beating you, Bloomberg. I'm not sick of winning yet either. I'm, I'm continuing to enjoy this. New York Times, under a million subscribers. The video up for a month doesn't even have 20,000 views. So I guess another example of us beating mainstream news on the internet. Now, ABC, they do have more subscribers than us. I got to give them credit there. But if you look at their views on their videos, they do not get as many views as we do. So I think that that illustrates that people are more loyal into going to InfoWars and the Alex Jones channel to go watch all the content we put out. 
Here's CBS News. Under, I mean, they got hardly anybody that goes and seeks out their news. And Infowars on YouTube, the Alex Jones channel. Now, here's just a, uh, an example of some of the personalities that go on these outlets. Nobody wants to follow them. Nobody seeks out their content on YouTube. Anderson Cooper, this is the official page. It doesn't even have an image up. Under 200 subscribers. Anderson Cooper is a nothing. A nothing. If they didn't have TV, they wouldn't exist. And you can see this with some of the other ones. Angela Rye, she is one of the worst. You know what? I'm sure she's a fine, she may be a nice woman, maybe a fine mother, but she is actually probably the, one of the worst pundits I've ever seen in the world. Here's Megan Kelly. Again, nothing. No subscribers. Folks, my, you, I'm a nothing. I'm a nobody. And I have over 15,000 subscribers. That's because the, our audience is the real audience. Our audience is the engaged audience. There you go, folks. One day ago, we have 100, almost 150,000 views on that video. 1.8 million subscribers. We thank all of you out there who have launched us to the top. We are now at the pinnacle, folks. Just because we're not on the cable television news doesn't mean we're fake. I can promise you that. I'm going to read real news, and then I'm going to provide my perspective on it. That's not fake. That is real. And besides, you decide what is real. That's on you. Not your government, not your mommy or daddy, you. You think news is fake? That's up to you, not someone else to decide. So this to me just illustrates how we have more viewers, we have the audience, and the reason why I go to YouTube, yes, that's one platform, but I feel like it's a illustration of how people seek out Alex Jones. They go to the internet, they have to type in the name, they have to go to our channel, they actually seek out, they want to get the information. They want to get the intel from us. Nobody does that with CNN. Nobody does that with Fox News. It's just convenient. They just have to flip on the light box and the channel is already there ready to go for them. Nobody actually wants to seek out and get that news. So what is the response that we're seeing from the establishment now that we are winning and we have the aggregation to prove it? Well, we've seen this. They want to start policing the internet, warning you of fake news. China presses tech firms to police the Internet, China invited global tech executive, uh, executives for a conference this week where it pitched its version of the web. So wait a second. Alex Jones was right. Fake news was right. Alex has been telling you that they wanted to bring in Chinese style censorship to the web. Now they're taking the mask off. And like I said, they're rolling this out. This, the, we've had stories like this all week long. We've had lists saying fake news. Google and Facebook want to censor fake news. Who are they talking about? They're talking about us, folks, because we're kicking their ass. So what do the, that, that's their response. Again, this is the difference between people at Infowars or the alt-right and people on the radical left is when we disagree with you, when we see you saying something we disagree with, we come at you. We want to debate you. We want to win in the minds and the hearts of the public. What do you do? You try to shut us up. You try to say we're fake. You try to say that we're racist. That's the other one, too. So here you go. CNN smearing Trump supporters. They just call everybody a racist. I remember when this used to be a joke. I remember like two years ago joking around, oh, racist, this, racist, that, racist, racist, racist. I didn't think it would actually reach this level. It's become reality. They literally call you a racist. So if I want to debate someone from the radical left, I cannot get a word in edgewise without being called a racist, uh, fake news, or a conspiracy theorist. So how, how am I supposed to actually grow intellectually when I can't have discourse with you to try to understand where the other is coming from? It's not possible. That's why these people are stuck in arrested development. Now, Pat Cadell said they need to start a new clean effort to inform the American people not to dictate to them this is a loss of journalism. Bingo. Could not have said it better myself. It's not journalism when you come out um, at your audience with an agenda that is bought and paid for, folks. It's not journalism when you have things that you cannot talk about. It's not journalism when you try to silence your opposition. No, that's a dictatorship. And that's exactly what this is. And this is what we're seeing in the EU. We're not letting EU go. German finance minister warns that Britain could still be paying into Brussels into 2030. Britain could be forced to write uh, checks to Brussels until 
2030, despite voting to leave the EU. That's the dictatorship. Well, you know, the people have spoken. They don't want this. But we're just going to go ahead and do it anyway. <clears throat> and, of course, Merkel and Obama were meeting to talk about this in a very, very, very strange setup they had with a dinner table in the middle of a room. Very awkward. And then I guess there was like one camera person let in to take this picture. It was like a total, total setup. Very strange. It looks a little awkward, a little a little demon, demon like perhaps, perhaps goblin like a little goblin dinner for you right there. But that's the response, folks. The globalists are freaking out. The establishments are freaking out because we are winning. You are winning. And don't let them silence you. Now is the time to speak out. Now is the time to be noticed. Now is the time to be outspoken and to force our political points home because we are winning. Let's take these people. We've got them against the ropes, folks. We'll be back. Nightly News Monday, 7 p.m. Central. Thanks to everybody who tuned in.